एल्कोहल शराब कई मुख्तलिफ शक्लों में लीगलाइज करने का अल्लाह ने हुक्म दिया हराम है तुम्हारे लिए बर्बादी सुरह मायदा पांचवा सुबह एक नंबर नब्बे शैतानी चीज है तुमको लेकर दुनिया भी बर्बाद करेगी तुम्हारी आखिरत भी बर्बाद करेगी तुम्हारी फैमिली भी बर्बाद होगी तुम्हारे मोहल्ले वाले भी परेशान होंगे और तुम समझ नहीं पाओगे जानी तौर पर माली तौर पर तुम कहीं के नहीं रहोगे तुम्हारी इज्जत मिट्टी में मिल जाएगी लेकिन फ्रीडम ऑफ चॉइस मैं अपनी आजादी चाहता हूं हम अपनी आजादी चाहते हैं इस उन्वान के तहत एल्कोहल को दुनिया के बेशतर मुमालिक में लीगलाइज कर दिया धार्मिक किताबें कहती है गंदी चीज है रुक वेद पढ़ेंगे हिंदुजम की सबसे टॉप की बुक बुक नंबर टेन चैप्टर नंबर फोर्टीन वर्ष नंबर ट्वेंटी वन उसमें लिखा है कि शराब गंदी चीज है मत पियो बनाओ मत बेचो मत बनाने वाले बेचने वाले और पीने वाले के साथ कोई कारोबार मत करो उसको अपनी बेटी भी मत दो रिश्ते में बाइबल शराब को गंदा कहती है आराम कहती है बुक ऑफ प्रोवर्स चैप्टर ट्वेंटी वर्ष वन शराब गंदी चीज है मत पियो उसका इस्तेमाल मत करो लेकिन धार्मिक किताबें अल्लाह का हुक्म अल्लाह के रसूल का हुक्म एक तरफ रखकर आज की गवर्नमेंट लीगलाइज कर दी लाइसेंस कौन देते ट्रांसपोर्टेशन की परमिशन कौन देते दुकान खोलने की परमिशन कौन देते बेचने की परमिशन कौन देते खरीदने की परमिशन कौन देते पीने की परमिशन कौन देते देखिए आप ये हरकत कर कर पूरे के पूरे दुनिया में लाखों में नहीं करोड़ों जिंदगी को बर्बाद कर रहे द फर्स्ट नंबर वन मिसकनसेप्शन रिगार्डिंग इस्लाम इन द टॉप ऑफ द चार्ट इज रिगार्डिंग जिहाद टुडे जिहाद इज द मोस्ट मिसअंडरस्टूड वर्ड रिगार्डिंग इस्लाम इट इज नॉट ओनली मिसअंडरस्टूड बाय नॉन मुस्लिम इट इज इवन मिसअंडरस्टूड बाय द मुस्लिम्स many non muslims as well as muslims think that jihad means any war fought by any muslim for any reason whether it be for power whether it be for wealth whether it be for land whether it be for language is called as jihad jihad does not mean any war fought by any muslim for any reason whether it be for power for wealth for land jihad is an arabic word which comes from the word jihada which means to strike which means to struggle so basically jihad means to strive and struggle in islamic context jihad means to strive and struggle against one's own evil inclinations jihad also means to strive and struggle to make the society better jihad also means to strive and struggle against oppression jihad also means to fight in the battlefield in self defense basically jihad means to strive and struggle for example If a student is striving and struggling to pass an examination, in Arabic we say he is doing jihad. He is striving and struggling. Many people have a misconception that jihad can only be done by the Muslims. There are verses in the Glorious Quran which says that even non-Muslims did jihad. It's mentioned in the Glorious Quran in Surah Al-Hamd, chapter thirty-one, verse fourteen. We have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to their parents. His mother carried him in weakness upon weakness, and his weaning is in two years. Next verse, Surah Al-Hamd, chapter thirty-one, verse fifteen says that. But if your parents do jihad, strive and struggle to make you worship somebody else of whom you have got no knowledge, then don't obey them. But live with them with love and compassion. A similar message is repeated in Surah Al-Kabir, chapter twenty-nine, verse number eight. We have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to their parents. But if their parents do jihad, strive and struggle to make them worship somebody else besides Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, besides Almighty God, then don't obey them. Here, the Quran is talking about non-Muslim parents doing jihad, striving and struggling to make their children do shirk, associate partner with Almighty God, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This jihad in Arabic we say jihad fi sabil shaitan, jihad in the way of Satan. What a Muslim should do is jihad fi sabil Allah, jihad in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Most of the non-Muslims, including many so-called Muslim scholars, they translate the word jihad as holy war. Holy war is translated in Arabic. It means harb al muqaddasa. If you read the Quran, if you read the Hadith, the word harb al muqaddasa doesn't exist in the Glorious Quran nor in the Hadith. Today, Muslims are labeled as terrorists by the international media. I say every Muslim should be a terrorist. What is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist by definition is a person who causes terror. Whenever a robber sees a policeman, he is terrified. So for the robber, the policeman is a terrorist. 
So in this context, whenever a robber, whenever a thief, whenever a rapist, whenever any anti-social element looks at a Muslim, he should be terrified. We should terrify the anti-social elements of the society. That's what the Quran says in Surah Al-Fal, chapter 8, verse 60. Cause terror into the hearts of the anti-social elements of the society. I know the today the word terrorist is commonly used for terrorizing any innocent human being. So in this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. He should, he should, he should selectively terrorize the robber, the thief, the rapist. We should terrify the antisocial elements, then only we can have peace in this world. Many a times, two different labels are given for the same activity to the same individual. For example, about 70 years ago, when India got its freedom, the Britishers were ruling India. There were many Indians who were fighting for their freedom of the country. These people by the British government, they were called as terrorists. But we, the common Indians, we called them as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. If you agree with the view of the British government that they had the right to rule over us, rule over India, then you have to call these people as terrorists. But, but if you agree with the view of the common Indian that the Britishers came to India to do business, they have no right to rule over us, then you have to call these people as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. And there are multiple such examples in world history. Dawah or destruction, what is the meaning of the word Dawah? Those of us, especially people come from the Indian subcontinent who speaks Indian Urdu, they know the meaning of the word Dawah. The moment he hears the word Dawah, he starts thinking of chicken biryani or mutton biryani. Dawah or Dawah actually means an invitation. Dawah means to call. Today we will not be speaking about an invitation. Today we will speak about Dawah to Islam, an invitation, a call to Islam, and an invitation is not given to whole family members. Normally an invitation is given to an outsider. Similarly, Dawah to Islam is mainly an invitation, a call to the non-Muslims. Whenever we speak about Islam to a non-Muslim, trying to clarify the misconception, trying to make him understand Islam better, to remove the negative idea that he have about Islam, it is called as Dawah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, it's a Sahih Hadith which is mentioned in Mishkat Al-Masabih, volume number 3, Hadith number 5737. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah has sent 124,000 prophets on the face of the earth. By name, only 25 were mentioned in the Quran. All the messengers that came before the last and the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people, and the complete message which they brought was meant to be followed till a particular time period. All the prophets that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only meant to be follow a particular group of people. For example, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ peace be upon him. He was only sent for the Jews, for the Bani Israel. Allah says in the Quran, in, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse number 49, that Jesus Christ Jesus be upon him was sent as a messenger to the Bani Israel, to, to the children of Israel. The same message is repeated in Surah Sab, chapter number 61 verse number 6, that Jesus Christ peace be upon him says, to the Bani Israel that I have been sent as a messenger to you. And the same message is even repeated in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 to 6. Jesus Christ will be upon him says, He tells his apostles, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? The non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, enter ye not into the way of the Samaritans, but rather go to the Lordship of the house of Israel. The same message is even repeated in Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, where Jesus Christ is upon him himself says that I have not been sent but to the Lordship of the house of Israel. That means according to the Quran and the Bible, Jesus Christ is be upon him was only sent for the Jews. Previously, the European scientists 
They believe that the earth was the center of the solar system and the universe. And all the planets as well as the moon and the sun, it revolved around the earth. And this was called as geocentrism. And this was believed since time in Ptolemy in 2nd century BC till as late as 16th century until Nicholas Copernicus. He propounded the heliocentric theory. And he said, it is the sun which is the center of the solar system and all the planets as well as the earth, it revolves around the sun. Later on a German scientist by the name Johannes Kepler, he wrote in his book by the name Astronomia Novia that not only the planets and the earth, they revolve around the sun, but they also rotate about their own axis. There are two heads. The planets and the earth, it revolve around the sun and the planets and the earth, they rotate about their own axis. And whole solar system, also in the galaxy, it revolves including the sun, but the sun did not rotate about their own axis. In this context, the sun was stationary. But when I read the verse of the Quran in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the night and the day, the sun and the moon. Each one traveling in orbits with its own motion. So the Quran says the sun and the moon besides revolving, they also rotate by their own axis. And the Arabic word is used here, yazbahun, derived from the Arabic word sabaha, describe the motion of a moving body. If I use this Arabic word sabaha for a person who is moving on the floor, it will not mean that he is rolling, it will mean either he is walking or running. If I use this word for a person who is in the water, it will not mean he is floating, it will mean he is swimming. By name, there are 25 messengers mentioned in the glorious Quran. It's mentioned in Trinita, chapter number 4, verse number 164. And so Rafir, chapter 40, verse number 78. That we narrate to the stories of some of the prophets, of others we don't. That means some of the messengers mentioned the Guru's Quran. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, There were 124,000 messengers sent on the face of the earth. All the messengers that came before the last and final messengers, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were come for their people. The message that they proclaim in totality for a particular time period.